to overcome the grossiness on this side we're going to stain them to look older and if that doesn't work then I'll use coffee stain paper so I'm going to cover it very lightly with the vintage photo it's a distress ink to be able to quickly do stuff for the pockets that are in the journal I'm going to use this old piece of A3 paper that's got a bit of splodgy paint on it some scraps from the scrap box yes I did clear the scrap box the other day it's still full again I don't know how it happens and just cover the whole thing using Mod Podge sticking everything down maybe doing some art style treatments to it and creating what I consider a background masterboard so it's not finished when you've done it, it it just creates an interesting background for the tags and then with the tags I tend to then collage on top when they're all cut into place I have done a couple of reverse masterboards which are meant to stop you needing to collage and potentially you could do it with this one I've got a variety of pieces here and I'm just sticking them down slightly overlapping different sizes I've not gone for anything too outrageous in changes of color what I'm going to do is I was going to do a load of treatments to it but I don't think I'm going to I think I'm going to try running it through the die cut with all the different tags that I have on the die cutter and see what needs to be done when they're cut out that masterboard ended up giving a ton of tags all of which are quite acceptable some are like little notelets and some are actual tag shapes these are for cards bank cards however because this is going out in the post i think i might put a couple of things in there so you get the idea that it's for bank cards we can do something like that that background is a little overly complicated now I could paint over it and tone it down a bit with a bit of dry brushing and then do some collage on top don't want too much having said that I'm putting more and more on okay that would need to dry but I quite like the idea of the dry brushing and then the collage tone down the background a little bit not all over so it's creating almost a border for the collage if you've watched any of my things you know that I do three or five or seven pieces here I've got a bit of old dictionary I have a piece that virtually covers that I have these roses that I printed and cut up the other day I don't know how many would actually fit on these because these are quite small I don't know if I did any very small ones just do on the actual thing but it would be nice to give them a bit of a background and then a little something in that corner and make a, a tiny little collage of them or doing the edges of anything I have picked up the Victorian velvet keeping this quite feminine so I've moved away from the vintage photo to the Victorian velvet distress ink and the other thing I've got that's already basically dry is these papers you could just take a bit of this paper and tear it down so you have the contrast one there one there and then the rows on top just about see them all you see I don't even think you need those pieces I think you could just try putting a rose over the white and not even collage it go with having that white frame it a little bit let's try that one see which one we prefer you can do different styles i think that works just as well as that in fact probably better because it stands out more without the clutter behind it plus it's a bolder color so maybe that's the difference let's have a look if we were to do one that was just pink whether it would still stand out like a pale pink like that one is if we had a piece of text behind it does it make it stand out more or less i think in a way it stands out less with the text so we may not need to do too much work we may just be a question of scrubbing over some white maybe stamping some script stamp over the scrubbed areas i'm sort of tempted to scrub at this and maybe 
do a stamp. Let me get a script stamp and see what we can do. I'm just going to use one that I've already used before. See what this is like when it's dry with a rose on top. That's quite nice. Probably could do with even more script on there. But I think that works quite well. Edge it with the pink, see what it's like. It does make a difference, doesn't it? With that one, you could do a word or something down here. Yeah, I might do that. What I might do is see if I can see a ink stamp. Yeah, that's a bit more of a finishing touch. What can we mass do before we do finishing touches? We could mass do the painting, painting all of these with the scrubbing in the white and then printing the script over that. And then it's just a question of what bits are you gonna add. Three are done. So I'm gonna put those to one side. I'm literally just do it with a finger. But I'll do all of these with that because even if I'm not using them all in this journal, they'll just join the stash. And if it works with the without the finger, like that's got a bit better of an edge really get the paint brushy edge. Some of those might just be stamped with an ink stamp rather than the flowers or a word. It really is scribbling like a kid really. I should have just dry brushed the master board. It's what I normally do. I just thought I'd give it a go without but it doesn't work for me without. I suppose we all get our own style in the end. Let those dry and then do some stamping. I know that people have asked me to show how I design things. So what I've done so far, as I said I would, is I've scrubbed over the white gesso and then I've stamped some script in vintage photo. With these, I didn't do the scripting because they're small. And then out of my stash, I've pulled out butterflies and vintage stickers, words, stamps, tickets, I already have roses cut and I have a set of postage stamps and some black ink and I have the Victorian velvet for going around the edges and then I'm just going to collage or add to these backgrounds so it might be that I just put one thing on it might be that I grab a bit of scrap and give it a background and I really do just play until I get something I like the look of see I think the scraps are too much on this that they're not really going to show up but the words might this time with the white background that works for me a piece of dictionary or encyclopedia I can't remember which it's quite brown because it's quite old. And to me, it's how complex do you want to get? You can ink stamp over this. You can put extra pieces on like postage stamps or words. This is obviously quite a blank area now. So I feel like I've let myself down by not having that rose a bit higher. So I am going to get some kind of postage stamp. I've got one that's a bit bigger and pop it over that. That's filled that little gap in. That is still a bit of an issue for me. I don't know why. I just feel it needs something in that corner. I do have these little pretend stamps. And if I put one on, recut it and then stamp over that as well. And I think there may be another little thing. I've got one that says postcard. I might get it so that just a bit of the word shows like that. It's beginning to look a bit more stamped up. Not perfect result, but you're not always gonna get something you absolutely love. Trim it up. I'm going to use, continue to use the Victorian velvet over the vintage photo. If these all need words, we'll do all the words at the same time. I've dug out a few shorter words or phrases to put on these little tags here. Got to get these to seal down a bit better. Okay, so they're cute, aren't they? 
Right, I'll do those and then we'll move on to all these tags here. With these tiny little tags, the most I can do is fit on the actual roses. What you do will have impact. Let that dry and trim off the excess for that one. I'll put those to one side for now and have a look at this one. I think we'll do it that way. And then we do have that, which actually fits. This, which runs up the edge. But then we need something else. And then again, it would still need something down here. Have a look at these vintage stickers. Because that might be a bit of a variety of things. Which it is. If you were to do a stamp and then that one and maybe come down to that one i need something circular that's better and now we need to cut this where there's a gap we need a little gap or to create one because there's a lot of white around this so where there isn't any white i want to get a little white gel pen which i know will be shiny in comparison but create that white border like the rest of it. And it doesn't look too much like you've cut it down. I'm going to take one of these stamps, stamp across that bottom bit to connect the bottom of the roses to the bottom of the circle. And again, that needs trimming up in a minute. Big one. So we could, let's have a look at this colour paper again. Maybe do that could go with something a bit squarer. I'm taking the whole meaning of a word. I'm wondering if we can get this to fit somehow with a biggish rose. If we do a rose at the bottom, you've got this up here with not a lot else going on and it needs something up here. Do a big stamp. That's another plant. Okay, you could do something like that. Is that too much? No, it's not. I think I will do that. That might need a tiny trim up. These should be dry enough now. Oh, a bit grotty on the back, this one. Take our pink. Go around those edges. I wonder if we should add a word to this one. It's got a lot of flower leaves at the bottom there yeah i might add a little something to this one just a bit of extra detail another one already a bit grotty admittedly i have these huge bright roses which you could put down just by themselves with maybe a word or a label across the bottom so let's have a look Okay, I have a smaller one. I don't like the shape of that, but maybe if you had a word or a label there. Then we need something down here. That, and I'm going to put a circular stamp on that one into between the two stamps. Right, that's another one of these raggedy looking ones. I might try a centralish square, so like matting and layering. Some kind of rose that basically fits within that square. There we go. Two more. I've got some tickets here. A ticket with a rose. Yep, that works. Nice and quick. Have another ticket. Yeah, we'll go with that. I might well modge podge these after. Not many more to go now. I wanted another one of those bright ones, basically by itself. Because the way I've done that is a bit low. Maybe a label or a name or something. Cute. Do not worry, I have not run out of roses yet, but I'm getting close actually. I've got another one of those ones that I'm not overly keen on. I wonder if I've got something that would compensate me for something I don't particularly like to cover up the circular bit and then something at the bottom. Slightly on a skew width, but I don't think that matters over that way and then something circular there okay that's slightly better woohoo last two what do we have we've got some numbers we've got a big airmail do the rose there and then the airmail over or the airmail and the rose over i think the airmail and the rose over huge one 
which if I did there and then did a label there is okay. Okay, hopefully I can cut that one down now. Edge that one up. To overcome the grossiness on this side, we're going to stain them to look older. And if that doesn't work, then I'll use coffee stain paper. So I'm going to cover it very lightly with the vintage photo. It's a distress ink. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the water and spray it. I might use the matte medium. I'm hoping to get something that's not too shiny. I do want to make sure everything is stuck down. This one did smudge. Actually, I don't mind that. So I'm going to keep that one. It's time to do some very basic decoration on these little pages that we put together don't really want to do too much and maybe something on the front cover I might go with someone sent me this pink lace and I might go with putting a bit of pink lace down there to indicate the front I'm going to try and attach the lace to some fairly plasticky tape there so hopefully it will work more femininity when you've got that plastic covering because of my mistake. Let's put that to one side to dry. Right, so we have a few little pages here. This one's got pockets. I'm not thinking of doing much, like maybe one of those. And eventually we'll pop some of those tags in here. Oh, that's a nice little bit of simple page decoration for those two pockets. This one, I think we're probably going to have to do something a bit more. Just literally cover it with some decorative paper when it's dry I might do a little strip of this on this side it's a notebook I'm not sure I need to do anything to that so I'm going to leave that one I think with this one we could put a bit of lace down that side so we know that that's there and again once that's stuck down it needs to dry a little we have this page which again has a tiny little pocket just at the top there using the lace to indicate where the opening is. Pop it down, let that dry off. I was thinking of maybe putting some lace down these two edges because I quite like the lace. Right. I've just seen these tiny little flowers. Now I know I didn't buy them, so I'm imagining they were an exchange. They break up this patterned paper quite nicely and again, indicate there's a pocket. With the tags, I have to rub a little baby powder over them because they seem to be a bit sticky. I can just pop it in one of these. It's going to stick over slightly, I think. Is it sticking over? Oh, not too bad. If we open this up, I don't know if I'm going to do any lace at the top of those. I'll just leave them like that. Two things in there. That's just plain. That's plain plain that one's a top loading and it's very small i don't even know if anything will go in there maybe we just leave it turned over and not use it as a pocket and then at the back here okay we have the big loaders here i'm hoping that fits under there tag wise it's going to be a bit of a pain i might put papers in there then do we have another little one? I think that might be too big. Maybe, maybe not. As soon as you start to add a few tags, it gets super chunky. At the back, we have a little pocket as well, here. And I can probably get one of the big ones in there. Okay, so now I was just gonna put a little hole in there I might just make a band actually because if I put a hole I've got to punch through this and that will ruin the look of this just take this white elastic and see if that's enough if not I'll use it for something else not a very exciting way to do it up I know you could use ribbon or lace or something but I'm just thinking convenience put that to the back that holds it and it's nice and malleable 
oh my goodness i think i've actually finished and we have a few spare which is awesome if you enjoyed that little mini notebook project please give me a thumbs up I know I made a few errors, but it's nice to see people making errors, I think. If you have enjoyed these videos, please subscribe. It really does help with YouTube and growing the channel. And let me know what you think of this tiny little handbag, purse, I think you call them in America, notebook. I think it's absolutely lovely. It's just the right size. And I will see you next time.